So I know I said I wasn't going to take this too seriously, but at the same time, when you do a thing repeatedly and you do it over a period of time, you expect yourself to be able to do a thing without messing it up. So for example, I have been recording my D&D group sessions and posting them on my YouTube channel as an unlisted video for the last uh, better part of 10 years, basically. And the one thing I'm so confident about is that I do not have my audio channels mixed up. I will not mess it up. And for the first time ever, I decided that, oh, I can listen to a podcast or maybe I can watch a movie while I'm also recording this, especially since I'm spending a lot of time being nice and quiet. And it just so happens to tie in with my ADHD super well, but you know, of course things can't go well and uh... Yo, the name is Patrick. Yeah. So now I'm in the tricky situation of, okay, what do I do? I have seven hours of footage that I could use and some really exciting things certainly happen, but it's not usable. So now what am I supposed to do? Well, I think I can use a bit of the replayer viewer mod and uh, in the later parts, there is the flashback mod that I have so I can record without actually using my recording software but we'll just have to see how that goes because I've honestly never done this much editing in either one of those mods and well, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, the first order of business that we have is we're gonna go ahead and expand the mine. Now I did go ahead and hit that big cave from the last episode and I decided to make a stairway down through the side of this cliff face. I was gonna go straight down, but it was full of water. Didn't really make for a great spot, but even deeper through the cave, there is a spot where there is this abandoned mine shaft that intersects with it. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out. There was actually just a couple of chests in here. One of them had a name tag. The other one just had a set of standard loot. However, it was being guarded by a skeleton. There we go. <laughs> um, went ahead and took care of him, but right behind that was actually the entrance to the rest of the cave, or I guess a different part of it. Like it's one big chamber, but it's like bisected a little bit. Full of monsters, but uh, luckily it is also full of riches. Now, one thing you might notice is uh, the audio might be a little bit off, uh, and that is because I'm using the replay mods audio to re recreate the scenes. It's my original video, just different audio. Uh, down here, we did actually find a couple of diamonds, so now I'm gonna have to get a pickaxe going, but it is a nice start to our collection. Maybe we can make an enchantment table out of that. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and get back to mining. And in the mine shaft, I've actually gone ahead and dug back down, and off to the right here is actually that bisected chamber that we were in before, so it's kind of actually a nice landmark. And we're actually gonna turn to the right here and dig into it a bit further, and find us some more diamonds. Eventually later, I actually run across some bricks, and for a moment I thought it was a stronghold, but you can see my reaction here. Why are there... Why are there bricks? Oh, I found a trial chamber? Um... Huh. I have no idea. I have not even explored one of these before. Oh dear. So now I'm left with two options. I either turn away, or I tackle this head on. Well, I'm a bit of a moron. Which do you think I choose? Stop moving around, you giggly bitch. This is empty. There's nothing in that. I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bomb is coming from downstairs. Holy fuck! 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 Get off of me! Get off me! Just 
What? Well, that explains the number of uh, zombies. Shoot, shoot, bulls, bulls. And even after all of that, I kept going deeper and deeper. I was gonna do what it took to finish this trial chamber. And at some point, I even got an ominous bottle. And I'll be honest, I thought about using it, but I'm not quite that dumb. How far does this thing go? I think this is how I was supposed to enter. Now that we've gathered as much loot as we can from the trial chamber, it's time to make our way back out. One thing that I didn't realize was that a completed trial chamber is never fully completed. The trial spawners can eventually reactivate and start spawning baddies again, which gives you more experience and more loot, but, you know, comes with a surprise chance of death. Luckily, we make our way out of there and back up to the surface for a much-needed break. And now, it's time to just take a moment and breathe. Relax. Enjoy the sun as it rises out of the east. We're going to take a break from a little bit of adventuring for a while. This way, we can work on different things. Back on the base, back at the surface. We go ahead and we get a bit more farming done, just kind of collecting the wheat and the seeds that we're going to need. And collecting that wheat reminds me that I, I probably should get some sheep. Sheep that I'm not going to kill just to get their wool. And that way we can actually harvest their wool and use it to make some carpets. Because carpets are going to be really handy. Not only are they good decoration, but they're actually really good for managing farms, making sure the animals don't get out of the gates. That kind of thing. And after decreasing the cow population for a little while, I got a, went ahead and got this enchantment setup done in the mineshaft area. You'll see here that it's full level 30 enchantments. Let's see, uh, let's see how past me did. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. That is basically the best I could get on a level 30 enchantment. And with our great enchantments on our pickaxe, I decided to go back down to the mine, see if I can get down to basically where the bedrock starts poking through and, uh, well, as you can see, I was able to put that Fortune 3 pickaxe right to work, getting us a whole good set of diamonds. This is going to lead to a good set of armor, and honestly, this is making me feel a lot more secure already. In reality, though, I'm down here for a lot less valuable materials. I'm actually down here looking for tough and deep slate, that way we can actually decorate our base a bit better. I'd like a little bit of the clash of the you know, regular stone and cobblestone from days of yore, and I like a little bit of the new stuff here too. I especially like the different things you can turn the tough blocks into using the stone cutter. I like how a lot of them look, and uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to use them a lot in this playthrough. And keeping true to my promise, once I get back to the surface, I actually went ahead and made a new diamond sword, and was going to make another pickaxe, but I decided to go ahead and make some armor. Uh, I actually made a new diamond sword just because I had actually burned through quite a few of the iron swords while I was down doing the trial chamber, and I just it just made economical sense. But here we are, we're going to go ahead and enchant with the boots and the helmet we got, and honestly, it's an amazing pair. You can just hear my reaction here. <laughs> I'm just ecstatic. Ooh, that's a nice combo! Let's go! Now that I've got some better gear under my belt, I decide to head back down into the mines. And instead of just strip mining like I could have, which would be really boring, 
I actually ended up deciding to do a bit of caving. This way I can get a range of materials and get some coal, get some iron, maybe grab some copper. I'm actually wondering if I could use that for anything decorative down the road, but either way, I'm just kind of going through and getting general material. I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just trying to gather as much stuff as I can right at the moment. And after gathering those materials for a while, I realize I'm going to have to go to the nether eventually, whether to get blaze powder or to get materials for in case I find a villager. I need this. So we head on in, and what I end up finding is a warped forest. Honestly, this was a welcome sight. I had been spawning in nothing but basalt deltas whenever I went to the nether for quite a while, even in a multiplayer modded world, just again, basalt deltas. And this is a nice change of pace. I'm able to get some of this wood. I later learned that you can actually break most of the tree material here using a hoe. I didn't know that for the longest time, but eventually I do get that. But the whole point here is to secure the nether portal. That's all I'm really doing at this point. I will do some exploring later on, but right now we're not quite ready for that. One thing I wanted to do before calling it a night on this day is actually go ahead and get some nether quartz obtained. Uh, what I want to do is get a chicken farm going, and hey, since this uh, glowstone is right here, I might as well gather it while I'm at it. Back in the overworld, I did eventually get this chicken farm idea that I had put together. It's actually pretty simple. It uses a clock that is powering a comparator. The comparator then goes into a block when you pull that lever right there, and that just dispenses eggs. When the chickens are all grown up, you pull that upper lever, it extends the piston, and pushes the chickens into the fireplace so that you can not only kill them, but you'll actually get their feathers and their meat. So I'm actually eventually going to be culling this large area here of chickens, but they are going to be living inside that little chicken receptacle, dispenser, whatever you want to call it. It kind of looks like a vending machine to me. Eventually this will be part of the overall wall and it'll be a little bit more incorporated, but we're gonna get some chickens loaded up in the top here and make this as automated as we can. So from here on out, I'm gonna try something a little bit more experimental. I'm actually using the new replay viewer mod, or I guess it's called flashback, but it's kind of the same concept. But here we are a couple days in game later, and I have actually found a zombie villager on the outside of the wall. So I went ahead, decided to grab him, didn't want anything else following him, so I decided to block stuff up. He actually hits me. My chest plate at this point has thorns, so he takes a bit of damage. I'm, I'm thinking, oh goodness, I can't let him hit me a whole lot, because he'll just end up basically offing himself. So I'm thinking here, as I'm luring him further and further in, okay, I gotta get a boat made, and I gotta keep him following me. I can't believe how well I actually did this. But I get the boat made real quick, and plop it down, and he gets sucked right into it. So, now we have a problem though. We have to cure him, and the only way to do that is by heading back into the nether and getting into a nether fortress. Now I think the rest of this video is actually going to be recorded through flashback. I, it's honestly with having lost the footage because of the audio error. I think this is the best way to handle things. So for now, we're actually digging a 3x3 three, right, three tunnel behind the shack that I built in the nether, trying to see if maybe there's another fortress in this direction, maybe even a bastion. Eventually, I do get to the point where I go, okay, there is not likely a fortress this direction. Let's go ahead and try leaving from the hut a different way. As you can see, going this way, we get through more of the withered, or I guess it's a warp forest, sorry, my bad. <laughs> we get through a little bit more of that, and eventually find our way towards this nether fortress. And now, I do want to say the camera tools in Flashback are pretty awesome. I haven't done nothing too crazy with it, but it lets me do these just like cool cinematic shots, and I had a lot of fun with it later on here. Uh, but I, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. For now, we're going to go ahead and brave taking down all of these blazes and wither skeletons, and they are just all over the place. Now, of course, the reason that we're trying to get blazes is because we need their blaze powder or blaze rods to make a brewing stand, and then we need the blaze powder itself to power the brewing stand, because we're going to try and make a potion of weakness and then make a splash po potion weakness. While I was here, though, I did decide to take on a couple of these wither skeletons. I was really hoping I was going to get a bit of their wither skulls, start working on my wither skull collection, of course. 
Now, one of the only drawbacks of playing with flashback here is I do like to make these really panoramic, dynamically visual scenes, but they take quite a while to go through. I guess it gives me a moment to talk about the fact that I have been sick for like a month now. I don't know why, but it's made recording stuff like this really hard, or at least doing like the voiceover part, because I just want to cough all the time. I just had a cough that just won't go away. Little tangent aside, I do appreciate the fact that if you've made it this far in the video, you are watching this scene. I've actually done something pretty interesting here where I've recorded the same scene twice, but one is without all the blocks being rendered and one is with the blocks being rendered. And I put the one with the blocks in it on top of the other one and then lower the opacity of it so you can still see the blocks, but you have an easier time seeing all the monsters that are running around here. Uh, this was actually an idea given to me by a friend and while they were watching me mess around with flashbacks, so I really appreciate it. And of course, we're gonna get our last blaze rod and we're gonna get out of the nether here. Back on the surface, we go ahead and dig out a spot here to put our brewing stand. I'm just putting it here for right now. I don't have a room in mind or anything, but I wanna get that splash potion made and get our guy here fixed. But unfortunately, I realized that I do not have any brown mushrooms. I have red mushrooms from a previous expedition, but I did not grab any brown mushrooms while I was at it. So we're gonna set on a journey and head back that direction. I am killing some sheep along the way because I'm actually hoping to make a bed so I don't get caught out in the middle of the night if I'm out here that long. And honestly, I really like this scene because we're just like chasing past me. It's cinematic. That's the word I'm looking for, cinematic. But as you can see, we've got this dark oak forest that I've been to before to get some red mushrooms for, I actually don't remember what I got red mushrooms from before, but I got them from somewhere. I remember this dark oak forest being here because I got the dark oak from it that I'm actually doing a bit of building with. Um, but here we're gonna grab some brown mushrooms and make our way back before it gets too late. We don't wanna get caught out here in the dark anyway. And again, I just love these sweeping camera shots as we're like lagging behind, catching up. I, I know I'm just giving myself a good pat on the back, but honestly, I'm just amazed at how well flashback works to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm really looking forward to using it a bit more and I'm probably gonna end up dropping the replay mod. But here we go. We're finally doing the moment. We've made our fermented spider eye, made a potion of weakness, gave it some gunpowder, and we're freeing our villager man from his zombified state. I do actually want to take a moment and talk about the fact that I'm not wearing any armor in a lot of these. I actually was wearing armor at the time, and as you can see, it just popped in. Um, but for whatever reason, it takes my model or my health being updated to change that. So, hey, I'm glad I was able to show that off. But one thing I realized uh, is that I don't really have a great place to grow any more mushrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and find a spruce forest because Podzol actually allows you to grow mushrooms on it even in like high daylight. So we're on our way the opposite direction out of the camp to try and find a spruce forest. But instead I find a bunch of icebergs and a shipwreck. Uh, that shipwreck was, um, it had some loot in it. I don't remember what it was, but uh, I can imagine the people that got that frozen there, they are not having a great time. Either way, we end up finding this spruce forest over here, and I was lucky enough that I actually found a puppy. So I went ahead, grabbed my boat, got him put in there, kind of try and make a way for him to get out of there, still in the boat, but through the ice. I did actually juke myself out there when I was doing this in flashback, and I just thought it was funny. I'm gonna, gonna include that there. But there are these pillagers that are just running through the area. And while they weren't really bothering me, I didn't want them to be an issue when I tried to leave. I didn't want them to break the boat by shooting it. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of them really quick. I end up actually earning myself here another ominous bottle, which is really nice. But we'll go and get all their stuff cleaned up, sleep through the night, that way we don't have to deal with any other monsters. And then collect all the spruce saplings, because that's actually what I came here for, and head back home. And once I've gotten home, I go ahead and tame the dog, grow me some pods all, grow some mushrooms, that way we have some extra, and start working on the base. I've got an idea for this in mind, but it's gonna be a long time coming. I've actually gotta make a repair in the next video that I'm doing, because uh, the one of the walls is slightly off. But either way, this is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. I've been having a lot of fun making these. It might be another two weeks, maybe even longer before I make the next one, but we'll see what happens. 
See you guys then.